talk is uh, over 100 slides, and last time I did it in 15 minutes. Um, and I was still going to rehearse and look through the slide, but I did update it recently. Um, so I, I feel a little on jittery ground here, but I'm going to take you through. Some of you have probably, no, you can, you can, you can, you can show that. Some of you have probably seen that sign on the way to Sutton. And that is exactly the ride you're going to have right now. Um, so please fasten your seat belts and take out your dentures and uh, let's go on a tour of Sutherland. Um, I've been at, working at Sutherland for uh, 25 years, last May already, and being part of the furniture. When I started there, there were exactly three domes and uh, th there's been many more added since in fact 20. So if we start, uh, we, we're looking back and we're looking forward, so this is looking back at uh, uh, Minister Ben Foster and uh, Margaret Thatcher who opened the place in uh, 1972 and uh, 73 officially uh, and uh, at the time there were only three domes on the hilltop um, and these three domes came or these telescopes came from from different parts in the world uh, or in the country uh, the one in um, the, the twenties the smallest one of we go back to that picture the, the first are 20, 30, and 40 inch. Excuse the, 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 the metric system here, we're still talking about them like that, but if you wanted to know, that's 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and one meter. Um, and uh, uh, 20 inch came from the uh, Union Observatory, or Republic Observatory, or whatever you want to call it, as it went through history. Chris will probably fill in on that a bit. Um, and it was removed, uh, later then to take to Sutherland, thanks Greg Roberts for the picture who was there at the time when they dismantled the observatory. Um, the twin inch is a, a very nice, uh, it's a Bullard and Timmons mount, uh, quite a nice telescope, quite productive still and doing sterling work, it's only got one instrument permanently fitted onto it, a photometer and it does actually quite a lot of work still today. The uh, 30 inch telescope um, was actually from the name, from the date there, you can see it's quite modern uh, compared to the others. And, and in fact, the, the actual mount of the telescope was used here, which is now the IT building. So the mount itself were used with these uh, three tubes, we call the MRM, the, the multiple refractor mount, and uh, therefore the telescope was added to, um, to, uh, 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 to be a, a telescope at the time. The tubes, if you go to Sutherland today, they, they're a different color now, uh, have been donated to the town and it's in front of the, of the, um, of the visit of the information center in, in town. Uh, the telescope is, is also still used quite productively. You can see now we've, re we've replaced that with a uh, proper counterweight. And um, the, uh, uh, it was actually a nightmare, to, a, a nightmare to balance back in the day with those tubes sticking out everywhere and uh, so it's much much easier to do these days. The, the, the whole uh, mounting system it was, it was actually still used manually up to a few years ago and it's now being, being modified with, in fact it's one of the only go-to telescopes, one of the few go-to telescopes on site. Uh, when I went for the interview in 1987 I, I, I expected all these fancy telescopes to be you know you push buttons and it goes into the sky and it's actually not uh, it's mostly for the astronomer's own protection, and uh, we've had uh, we've had a few incidents of telescopes failing, being being ridden into the dome, etc. But I'm not going to do dirty washing yet. That's not my uh, my role right here. Uh, the 14s or the Elizabeth telescope, uh, made in 1962. It was originally where my office is right now, uh, or right here in this building at the back here. Um, and uh, the telescope was, was dedicated in 1964, as you see there, uh, um, and uh, uh, then removed uh, and taken to Sutherland, where it is today. Uh, also very productive. Uh, the 13s of the ones we've done so far is probably the least productive for some reason. This is a nice size. Uh, it's got a whole suite of instruments, CCDs, photometers, uh, um, um, high-speed cameras, etc., uh, and it does a lot of work. In fact, John Menus will probably tell you about some of the work it does uh, um, uh, tomorrow. Um, so then in, in 1974, uh, the, 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 the telescope 
if I got an arrow there, yeah. That arrived, sorry, 76, yeah, sorry, yeah. So about three, four years after Sutherland was, was officially um, um, open, the 74 inch was moved from Pretoria. Uh, uh, it used to be where Fort Klapperkop, uh, there's a fort there. Uh, in fact, you, you can see that's the old site. Um, yeah, there's a, it's a defense in, intelligence uh, uh, military defense, that's actually an axiom, uh, axiomoron, I think, or something yeah. like that. Um, and and uh, so today the building is still used for, uh, uh, as a lecture room, and, and, and the buildings on site still exist and, and are, are, are being used for, uh, for the military intelligence, whatever that is. Um, the, the, uh, uh, the, the telescope is actually the oldest telescope on site, dates from uh, 1938 as you see there it's got a very interesting history which Ian wrote up and I'm not going to take too long on that because it's a very interesting story about at some point that the mirror was buried uh, well it was only the third casting that was finally successful because to cast a, 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 a 1.9 meter blank of, of, of uh, low expansion glass was only possible at, at the day in Corningware in America so only the third casting was finally uh, successful because the mirror is 11 inches thick. Uh, it weighs, what's it, two tons or something. And, and uh, uh, so then they sent it to England, put it on the grinding machine, started grinding it, and, and, and the first report said that the, the, the grinding is going very well. We may complete this in a record time. They did actually. It took nine years finally to do it. Um, because the war came and the telescope mirror was buried at some point, and uh, it was lots of, of uh, references, no GPSs yet, so you had to put all sorts of references. So if the whole place was bombed, that they could find the mirror again. Luckily, it wasn't bombed. Uh, but as it goes, all these heavy machineries were, uh, industries were put to make war machinery at the time, so everybody had to sort of get back to telescope finally. In the meantime, the astronomer has been appointed sitting in Pretoria, but an Engelsman mag ook een plan, so so the the Englishman also, or was it Irish or whatever? To me, it's all the same. Uh, uh, then then had had the had the telescope started using it, uh, uh, and it's actually got a very famous finder on it. Um, so the the tube is big enough so that you can can stand upright in in the tube. Um, sorry, we've got so many pretty pictures of it, and uh, it's got a whole suite of instruments as well. So I'm on the technical team, so uh, this is typically what happens on a Wednesday morning. We change instruments, uh, and the astronomers then w would, would, would book the telescope for a multiple of a week, a week or multiples of, uh, for a specific instrument. So we would, then, we would then change instruments, and that will typically ha happen on, on, on some of the smaller telescopes as well. So um, if we just look at the sizes of the telescope, um, and you can see the size sort of goes up with the, with the size of the building. The size of the mirror goes up with the size of the building. Um, but but there, are, there are exceptions, like, like that telescope over there is actually uh, the third largest on site. Uh, uh, but being a modern uh, alt azimuth mounted computer controlled telescope, it's obviously much, much, uh, it needs much less space to move about in because you will see no... In these previous pictures, there's a lot of space in these domes that are effectively wasted space, but of course that's for a telescope to move around in. So your modern telescopes tend to be much, much more um, uh, compact, and of course salt there is only about double the size of the 1.9 meter, and it's got five times the light gathering. So uh, um, the other thing from this picture is that these telescopes with the M's are all manned, uh, um, so the rest of the telescopes, and there's actually some missing here on the picture, uh, um, are, are all uh, robotic. So with the advent of the, of, of, uh, the internet and with computers, it of course becomes much, much easier to control telescopes, that, especially things that are going to do routine tasks for you, and, and that's going to do specialist tasks to have them, to have them robotic. Um, so, uh, uh, so the infrared telescope, the one that I pointed out uh, um, being, being such a compact one, is a joint, uh, yeah, a joint effort between the, the University of Nagoya in, in Japan and the, and the um, astronomic, uh, and, and uh, SAO. Uh, it was built around 2000, and um, 
uh, uh, interestingly enough as well, you, you would have seen that all the other telescopes have these, or not all of them, the old ones seems to have these shutters around them. Um, and these ones, and, and the main reason for that is to keep the sun off the building during the day. So you don't want that concrete mass to heat up because at night, or well, even during the day, that hot air gathers in the top of the, in the dome and when they open the slit, you've got this hot air escaping and you, you've seen that all springbok in, in, the, in, the, in the far distance in the Karoo, it doesn't have legs, they're hanging in the air. And, and that's exactly the mirage effect that you want to prevent. Um, so dome seeing is sort of controlled passively in these telescopes and in salt of course there's a big aircon and the more modern telescopes have, uh, have aircons kicking in as well. Uh, in the Japanese telescope they basically just have a louvers opening, you have a free flow of air so the dome is quickly cooled and the telescope is cooled to, to the night temperature. Um, very Japanese environment when you walk in there. Um, and, and uh, uh, even the writing on the board, and it's, of course they write from left to right, from right to left, sorry. Um, so the first of the robotic domes arrived in, in, 19, in 89, um, and uh, one of the early technicians christened it the gristle net, and that's for George whatever Isaacs, that was the, the professor that started th this, um, this network of telescopes, there's six of them all around the world. Uh, and Sol is obviously the sun and network, and this was the second one. Um, but it's actually officially called Bison today, uh, and you can see what the acronym is for. Um, there are six around the world, as I said. They monitor the sun 24 hours uh, uh, as, as, the, as the Earth turns. And, um, to, uh, uh, and, and that's the American equivalent, or that's the British equivalent, equivalent of Gong. Now, Gong. Uh, is, 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 is more sort of well known because they've got more pu publicity, etc. But this one has been done sterling work even before Gong really got online. And, um, and uh, yeah, th th they want th th this, this has got a little bit of a story behind it. One of the technicians that, uh, or one of, I think it was a technician slash astronomer, a uh, student really, uh, uh, um, he was going to go for Sutherland initially for three months. He ended up there, being there for almost a year. He married a South African girl. He went from slim to fat because he liked all the brides and whatever. <laughs> and, but he did sometimes feel, feel that's probably in the beginning when he still felt homesick. Um, the, uh, uh, so that's the dome of the, of the, of the, the solar telescope. And then the uh, identical dome that was built at exactly the same time. Is, is the ACT, or, or used to be called the APT, Automatic Photometric Telescope. Uh, and it was uh, renamed in honor of Dr. Cousins, who you probably know about, who's done some sterling work here at this observatory. Um, built in our workshops in, in uh, Cape Town here, uh, f uh, completed in 93. It's actually a copy of uh, autoscope design which we actually bought the plans, but we found that the, the design was just not going to work. And in fact, the few autoscopes that did started working around the world uh, all suffered all sorts of mechanical problems. So uh, we had an engineer, uh, a designer here, Dick B. Ellis, who likes to over-design things, and he's made it very strong and sturdy, and it's actually still, still, uh, still it turned out pretty, pretty good. Um, if you walk around site, you see different dome shapes. Uh, you see turrets, you see normal domes, you see these uh, funny ones, and you even see what used to be, what used to sort of go for air glow. So, so it's difficult to, to order these things. So I'm just going to go a bit to dome shape for a bit. So there's quite a few um, clamshell designs on site, um, and uh, this one called Y Star uh, of the University of South. Uh, Korea uh, used to have, I, I, I don't have a, 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 photo, a picture of the telescope, unfortunately, it's a very, very compact dome, it's actually a half meter telescope in there, uh, yeah, 20 inch telescope, um, and it was, it was meant to, um, to, to look at objects that can, that, can, that can basically collide into the earth, anything that moves out there, uh, uh, it, was, it was hunting down effectively, and um, uh, the, the, and of course, it, it, it has to uh, compensate for things like satellite. Greg would have loved to see the data they rejected. 
um, and and uh, uh, it didn't really produce much science, and it's actually being mothballed now or being discontinued really. Uh, it's too, too too fancy, right? <laughs> the <coughs> and, and another clamshell is Monet. Uh, it sounds French, but it's actually monitoring network for telescopes, and it's a, a, a mainly a German consortium, although there's a South African component into it as well. Um, a massive clamshell dome. There are two of these. This is called Monet South, and there's also one at uh, McDonald. Is that true? Where's the other one? Uh, in in uh, in South uh, in America, uh, in Texas. Um, those are the two people uh, uh, involved in in the project. Um, very very nice fast telescope. What's the size of it? Point one point two. I can never remember. Uh, um, quite a quite a fast modern telescope. A uh, project that's battled to get on the go. The building was standing around for about four or five years. <coughs> Finally got the telescope, and it's there's still a few problems with with it. But it is it is it is coming along, and um, uh, there's also a big outreach component of of the Monet time, which is actually available to to mainly for school groups and educational stuff. Obviously, that's that's the aim. Um, but even amateurs can eaves, eavesdrop in some of these. Um, there's uh, 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 the two, probably the two, in fact, they're not the very latest telescopes to appear on site, or domes to appear on site, uh, uh, is a Polish uh, Solaris, uh, um, two domes of, of the same. They were originally going to put this, they, they've got four telescopes, they've got money for four telescopes. Um, they had to spend their money within a year because they got a, a grant from the World Bank or something like that. So they ended up putting two on Sutherland because they just couldn't find an, another site quick enough and, and to, get, to get going. Uh, it's, it actually takes an enormous amount of time. What, what I've been doing for the last couple of years is not touch electronics for a long while now and I'm actually building domes. And uh, I'm normally the sort of, the, 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 the person who has to organize contractors and stuff. And it's, it's quite, quite exciting to see, to see new, new things uh, appear on, on site. So uh, two robotic telescopes. They've just come online. Uh, there's one in, in Australia as well. And the third one, I forgot now where that's going. That, that is, uh, that is uh, they first got the, the Australian one going, then, this, then these two, and, and now the, the, the third one is, is going on site. Pretty photogenic dome, nicely reflective, so you can see the whole site being imaged in, in there. Few roll-off roofs on site as well. They uh, sort of an old design, but they still work pretty well. Very simple and uh, easy, easy to operate. In one of them is Kelt South, and Kelt stands for Kilo Degree Extremely Little Telescope, and that's it. Camera with a lens, uh, um, and uh, you can see they sort of a joint venture between UCT. One of our students is or masters uh, uh, doctoral students is is. Uh, has written his thesis on it, and and um, then the guys from, was it is that where where uh, Elvis Presley came from or something? Um, they, uh, this is the Sutherland Telescope uh, with the roof open, with the lens of it pointing down, so it doesn't gather d dust. This is uh, Exoplanet Hunt, uh, and I think John Menzies is going to. I'm not going to talk too much about the science of these things um, because I don't know much about it anyway. Um, and uh, uh, the, the, the lens, if I remember, is 25 degree field, 25 by 25 degree field. So it's quite a big field. Um, and, and it is also an exoplanet hunt using the transit method. And um, it's actually been, I don't know how much I mean, this discoveries has come from it yet, but it's interesting that, that Super Wasp has sort of, although they're in competition, uh, Super Wasp is, is uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, as you can see the acronym there, uh, UK group doing basically the same thing. Um, they used to use, uh, used to use 200 millimeter uh, lenses f1.8. Uh, these lenses became quite cheap at the time when digital cameras came in, and and suddenly there was this 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 these lenses going for very cheap because nobody wants them anymore. Somehow they couldn't be adapted for digital or something, and. Um, they are, uh, there's John just, just, just peeping in, so, so please help me out where I, where I get it wrong. Uh, um, the lenses has just been replaced, 
and uh, astrophotographers eat your hearts out. Look at the, the specs on that lens there. Uh, they've got eight of those lenses in. Uh, uh, one of our guys actually borrowed one of these before we modified them. Uh, uh, and uh, quite, quite amazing. Uh, John will probably tell us why they w went to the wider field, uh, um, but I believe it is something that they, that they sort of learned from, from, uh, from the Kelp guys who, who's got much, much wider, wider fields in a, in a single lens. Um, then in the other role of roof observatory is a, uh, a thing, we just call it the Sumi hut, and, and in there is a telescope of eight inches aperture, but the whole telescope is cooled down, including the optics as well as, as the instrument. Um, uh, the, the, it's an infrared instrument uh, 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 that um, they, they uh, uh, yeah, obviously deserve, uh, um, can observe. I think it's a fairly wide field, if I, re I remember correctly. Um, the interesting thing is that it's actually built on the, on the mount, which they built as a demo for the real IRSF telescope, the one you've already seen. So they've just tipped it over and made it into an equatorial. Um, so the, there's another role of roof observatory called the DIM, uh, which is for seeing testing, site testing. So in the early days of um, before SALT was built, and this picture was taken, I, because it was still film days, I, I don't have a date for it, but it's, it's, it's in the early days of site testing. Uh, they, they built a, a telescope with a differential image motion sensor to, um, to measure the sightseeing, to, to basically decide uh, by having movable systems moving around on site, uh, because you, those of you who've been to Sutherland, if you've, if you've seen on the, on the aerial pictures here, that salt sort of separate from the other dome slightly. Uh, and that position was found slightly better than the others. The DIM has is, is been modified and upgraded, uh, uh, and it's now called Tim DIM, and Tim called after Tim Pickering, uh, the guy who sort of got it going. And um, uh, for a while, which I don't have a picture of, they, they, have, they had a, 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 a telescope there called Slowdark, which is closer to salt. I'll show you one of the aerial pictures just now. Um, and that can actually measure the seeing in different heights in the atmosphere. Uh, and by cross-correlating that with this DIM, we can now do the same thing roughly, I think. Um, this also incorporates a uh, all-sky camera um, because we had one of these, what was it called again, Greg? Uh, Fisher. Con Concam. Concam. Concam is an official camera that sort of comes in a, in a attache case and you can put it down and plug it in and it works. But it didn't like the Sutherland uh, sunshine and atmosphere that just killed the computer and the camera a couple of times. So they, they've got this system now, which, which is sort of just under. This was just a temporary setup, as you can see there. And, um, and it supplies now information. And this, these are all on the web. You can look at them at night if you want to yourself. Uh, um, and and uh, so that's basically what, what, the, what the picture looks like, and of course sometimes we have visitors as well. Um, <laughs> so th th that, th the seeing information and the dim information is now uh, broadcast on, on the SALT uh, weather page. You can see there's some seeing information. Uh, this is not a good example because it's bad seeing. Um, and, and, uh, 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 and there's also a nice weather page which is slightly changed from I did the screenshot. But uh, the seeing information is quite crucial now for SALT observations because in, in their proposals on, on, a, on uh, observing a specific object, uh, seeing conditions like, you know, you don't want full moon or you, don't, or you can work in bright moon, etc. Uh, uh, one of the boxes you tick is, is what sort of seeing conditions do you expect uh, these observations to be, to be made in. So, uh, so seeing information is now available on, on TAP. Um, the, uh, uh, who, who, who recognizes the colors there? Yeah? Google. Yep, that's right. So Google is also Reed Sutherland now. And uh, this guy here, uh, um, uh, Rossing, what's his name again? Wayne Rossing. Uh, uh, he doesn't look like it, but he's got quite a thick checkbook there. And he runs this whole show. He's an amateur. Um, I forgot his. His, uh, his whole history, but he was involved in developing the Apple something, 
and he later on uh, uh, um, was then involved in, in, in uh, generating Google or starting up Google and he's now getting income from the um, from uh, the advertising revenue. So this was in the headquarters in Santa Barbara where he's got about 70 people uh, all being paid from that thick checkbook and he's busy developing six sites around the world of which Sutherland has got one of the sites with three one meter telescopes uh, that will be going in there and um, there's a picture of, of one of them um, and you'll see some extra pads on the side there and they are um, for uh, these these will be used for science and then the amateurs can also have fun and and of course it's all educational so if you can somehow make your fun educational that's fine uh, uh, um, th they will be having 16 inches uh, six, two, two 16 inch telescopes in Sutherland only two of those pads are going to be populated with two of each so there will be four 16 inch telescopes that will be available to uh, to to well I, I at the time w when they started they haven't actually worked out exactly how they're going to dish out the time this this picture has come into my inbox uh, last Thursday two, two days ago and this is first light images from the Chile site uh, which was the first site they got going so this is th from the one meter telescopes there yeah so there is Slodar the, the site testing it's just a, basically a tent there. Um, so if we shift our attention around to the big, big telescope, I'm not going to go into too much detail of, of SALT. Um, SALT is, is, is a, is a joint, uh, jointly owned, a Section 21 company, jointly owned by uh, 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 basically 13 international partners uh, spread over uh, seven countries. So there's all the countries and there you can see where they are on the world um, that are jointly have, have all contributed to SALT to build a telescope. They are the people who can get access to the telescope time in lieu of what they have added uh, percentage wise. Uh, some, most people has added money, uh, some people has in kind. So the HET itself, which is the copy of SALT uh, in Texas, uh, uh, have contributed the plans obviously so they get they get telescope time for that and um, uh, University of where are they now uh, uh, um, who's made the uh, one instrument uh, where are they uh, AT, yeah, the Wisconsin Wisconsin has built the spectrograph for salt so they have and and um, then uh, the, 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 so those were the first light instruments, so the second light instruments are being built in, uh, in Australia at the moment. <coughs> can't see them right now. Anyway, um, 91 segments making up an 11 meter array of, 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 uh, of mirrors. Uh, that's of course in a spherical arrangement, so, so because you're working so far off axis, the Arecibo effect Again, back to radio astronomy, that big telescope in a James Bond movie that points straight up. Uh, they basically move the, 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 the horn around to be able to get more coverage of the sky. And the Earth's rotation gives you the other part, the other rotation. Uh, salt works on the Arecibo effect. So at the top, there's actually a tracker that can move in X and Y. And, um, and therefore, while the telescope is stationary during an observation, the tracker moves across to compensate for the Earth's rotation. And for your photographers out there, if you can see your face 11 meters in diameter, that gives you a thrill. Because <laughs> when you're up on the tower, the tower is just used for, um, for alignment, and, and uh, the, the uh, uh, sorry, I can't find a picture right now, but so the, 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 the tower s sits at the center of curvature of the mirror, of course, and uh, you people who my telescopes, if you, if you walk back and you can see your eye filling the whole the whole, uh, the whole aperture, you can see your face doing the same here. Yeah. Um, so, uh, apart from all the telescopes on site, um, there is also things hidden underground, and we are not part of the conspiracy. I am, well, I'm actually not allowed to say much about it. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll, I'll take you into those in a moment. Um, so, there's, 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 there's basically two buildings that are 
or, or, well, yeah, they, they are underground. Um, and and uh, the, the, then there's, there's other infrastructure as well. So let's start with, with what used to be called the Hermanus Magnetic Observatory. <coughs> Apparently, Sutherland and Hermanus is on the same magnetic line or something. And they also have magnetometers there. Um, and this dish sticks out uh, uh, being part of this um, uh, seismometer that is, that is basically underground there. It's underground because the uh, measuring plinth is on bedrock. Uh, and therefore, any, any earth movements gets, gets registered. And this dish here is actually transmitting that information. We are part of the uh, Comprehensive Nuclear Boundary Treaty. So any, anything that moves on the Earth gets checked everywhere, and um, so you can't do secret uh, nuclear tests anymore. Um, uh, so the, 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 the University of uh, um, San Diego group that has actually now got um, uh, the, the, that owns the equipment. Uh, it used to belong to the South African Geological Survey or something. Uh, and they needed uh, room on the plinth. They approached us years ago, and as far as I know, it's actually all their equipment now, but that Africa now can get the information. Um, GFZ is a microgravity uh, system by a German uh, group uh, that is one of these underground buildings. Uh, this is what the detector looks like. It just looks like a big tank filled with helium uh, kept at well, helium temperatures, which is few degrees Kelvin. Um, and uh, th that, of course, means, um, what do you call it, superconductivity, which basically means that if you want to uh, 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 levitate a sphere with, uh, with, a, with the smoothest magnetic field you can find, is um, if, you can, if you can inject current into the sphere and then switch, uh, or then just close the circuit and go away and the current will keep flowing forever, which is basically perpetual motion we get into. Uh, to levitate the sphere, that's the, there's no power supply that can give you such a smooth magnetic field to hold the ball in the air. And, and therefore, if, the, if any, if any um, gra gravitational movement on the, on the ball is then, is, then measure, is then measured. And that's more or less the, the, um, the, the principle of, of the instrument. So there's the ball being, being, being <coughs> levitated. Inside, inside the tank. Um, this, of course, is very, very sensitive, and one of its noise factors is, of course, earthquakes. Although that information also gets fed back into the into the system. So uh, normally, you see this uh, this uh, sine curve, which is, of course, the, the tides. So the the actual Earth at at um, at Sutherland, when the sun, when, you know, at at which is what what is e equivalent to um, um, spring tide, what's it called? Yeah. Spring tide uh, is 42 centimeters. So you, you actually lift the earth 42 centimeters. So, so it's, only, it's not only the sea that moves, but it's also, also the. And that, that massive earthquake that uh, hit Japan not too long ago, uh, of course, went right over the, over the over, you know, it, it basically went full scale. Um, it even activated the tip sensors. Now, the the, 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 that sphere itself stands on, on, three, on three, uh, uh, three legs, uh, and, and the three legs are, are controlled to keep the instrument exactly upright. And, and the way they do it is they actually heat the, the oil in the legs, which is, acts like pistons. And, and, and that's what but basically keeps the instrument upright. Now, normally you don't see, I mean, that the current going into those heaters has been, has been, re, has been monitored. But normally nothing happens because there's such small <coughs> movements that's really needed to keep the, the tank upright. With that earthquake, those sensors kicked into, into, into place to actually, so as the earth was actually basically being wobbled, if you like. The other place where it also registered, um, now th there's, a big, there's a big hydrological experiment which is done in the small now in Sutherland and apparently is going to be expanded uh, uh, countrywide. Um, they've drilled boreholes uh, and they measure, they measure the level of the boreholes. Uh, now some boreholes don't do, do this because it depends on, on what, what's, happen, what's happening down below. But some of them are actually a closed system. So basically as the earth squeezes 
uh, and, and, and as the earth being squeezed, the water go, gets pushed up and, up and down the, the borehole. And uh, uh, so normally you see the normal tidal uh, movements and you can see from Neep to, to, to spring tides over there. Um, but the, 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 the actual um, earthquake registered on, on, the, on the borehole as well. So it was quite a massive earthquake. Um, there are two or three micro millimeter GPS antennas on site as well. Um, one of them uh, 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 works with a high drill and they are basically measuring continental drift. Uh, most of you probably know that South America is like drifting away at the rate your fingernails grow from us eight millimeters a year or something. And, and, uh, um, and the Department of Land Affairs is also taking that same data and these days with, um, with, with, with GPS plays quite a big role in doing survey work. So it's much easier, you just plumb the thing down and you take a reading. It's not like you have to do all these fancy triangulations and stuff. But of course GPS is not that accurate. So you can make it more accurate by having a fixed station and, and then knowing what the satellites are doing and, and then feeding those errors back into, into the system. So if you do survey work in the, in the area, you can buy, or I don't know if you get it for free, this information from Land Survey, and, and then you can, you, you can correct your, your reading. So you get, I think, millimeter accuracy. Yeah, so um, 20 domes on site at the moment, and it has sort of grown from, uh, from three when I, four when I, when I started there. Um, just uh, playing out with some sort of pretty pictures of, of the site, very photo, photogenic site as well. Um, down below, those of you who have been there, uh, the, our old workshops is all, all we turned into a visitor center. Um, so you can wander around there looking at the displays. At night, you've got this roll-off roof where you've got a 16 and a 14 inch telescopes to look through. Of course, Ireland is famous for its cold. <coughs> and this isn't snow, it's just frost. And that's snow, or a little bit, light snow. Um, and sometimes from the air, you can see the observatory site is where? There. <laughs> there. <laughs> and there's the observatory site from, from the air. Uh, of course, this is not what we want, and this is unfortunately what the year of astronomy 2009 started off with. Um, this is not what you want either, but this is just part of it. But then when it clears and uh, the stars come out, uh, it's of course one of the mag magnificent sights to be at. Zodiacal light and unfortunately <coughs> man-made light from Booster and Cape Town as well. So that's, that's it. Yes, I actually wanted to, to, to add that, but I was, bit, I was caught a bit. <laughs> Uh, 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 um, they, 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 in the immediate future now, there is a Korean telescope. I think it's. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to topple Bloemfontein now as the second, third largest telescope in the country right now. I think it's 1.6 meters, where, where Bloemfontein is 1.5. So, uh, so and the construction is is probably going to start early next year. Um, those. Uh, um, Korea, ah, those American domes, those Google domes, have, hasn't got their telescopes in yet, so that'll probably, st uh, but that's, that's due to, st to start early next year, but it was supposed to be finished by now, but, but also, yeah. Willem uh, Estreiser, uh, who you probably know from SKA Farm, he always used to say, two minute noodles takes 15 minutes to make, <laughs> and that is so true, because if you take the whole, the whole thing, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's the immediate future right, right now. Thank you very much, Philippe. Once again, to you as well for jumping in, for doing this. And we're looking forward to your